Hello there, my name is Polishlinks and welcome back to Homeward. You don't see this, but in this corner here, well, I have a freaking black rectangle. And that's because of the software I used to record, but in the video it won't have an effect, I believe. And you should see nothing there, basically, the, the color of the wall. But let's go with the story, of course. <clears throat> Minamikawa High School was a private school that focused mainly on international studies, so I didn't feel like I was very behind in many of the classes. In fact, I was probably ahead of everyone when it comes to English. Anyways, since I transferred near the beginning of the school year, we weren't really that far into any of our classes. Still, I couldn't afford to slack off, so by lunchtime, my notebook was already filled with notes. <clears throat> now I think I'll just head off to the cafeteria to grab some bread. Yahoo! All of a sudden, the door slammed open. Oh man. Oh, there are ya! There you are, you could! Before I knew it, the Nami had marched across the room, grabbed the chair, and plopped down in front of me. She revealed two bento boxes from behind her and nearly slammed them down on the table. <laughs> I know you've been waiting for this, Rikun. No, I wasn't actually waiting for anything at all. Waiting for what exactly? <laughs> By now, everyone else was looking at us, wondering what all the commotion was about. Ta-da! Nanami opened the bags of bento boxes, revealing the two delicious looking meals. Hey, they actually look pretty nice. Nanami swelled up like a croaking bullfrog with pride. <laughs> Unbeknown to you, my family is now the owner of the Superizu Donkey down by the mall. The what? The Superizu Donkey. Eh? You mean the Surprise Donkey? Uh, as expected of an American. Come to think of it, I had been, I had seen that bizarre looking restaurant before when I passed by them all yesterday. Although seriously now, what kind of a restaurant would call itself the surprise donkey? Definitely not the kind of mental image I want to have when I order something to eat. <laughs> well, never mind. Yeah, since I help out my parents there all the time, I've gotten pretty good at cooking. Come on, try it, try it, you won't regret it. Thanks, itadakimasu! I didn't think I'd ever have to say that before eating again in my life. Donami eagerly watched as I grabbed a sausage cut in the shape of an octopus and ate it. In fact, a little too bit too uh, eagerly, her face was pretty much about to hit my nose. Well, it's good. Really? Oh, then try this, Rikun, and this, and that! She pointed to various items in the bento box with her chopsticks. I'll try them all. From today on, I'll bring you your bento to school every day. Uh, are you sure it won't be? No problem! Oh, Musio! What? She's even trying to speak broken French now. Oh, Monsieur, okay. You won't believe it, Rikun. The Sapuraizu donkeys. <laughs> I can't even say what she's saying here. Gotten so popular now that sometimes the line goes all the way outside the door during the lunch rush. Sometimes I even need to carry a plate on my head to give everyone their food on time. Really? Sounds pretty crazy. Nanami's mouth worked too quickly for me to give up. Oh, it's her, John! Ah, no, Nathan! Come on, come on, sit down here! Nanami appropriated another empty chair and moved it to my table. Hey, Harchan, this is my old friend, Rikun. Take good care of him from now on, okay? Yeah, we've already been introduced, Sayuri san. No, no, Chan's telling me a lot of great things about you. Did you know, Rikun? Harchan's been working at Super Eyes Donkey ever since we opened three years ago. So, Haruka's son's been working ever since the beginning of high school. Hey, it's really not too much trouble. Oh, by the way, Rikun. Which club were you thinking of joining? That sure was an abrupt change of topics. I guess none of us can really keep up with her pace. Club. 
It builds your mind and body. F find your inner character by joining an after-school club. Ugh, too deep. Please return to your ritual self, Nami. Most of the students in our school belong to a club. So your son should be thinking of joining one too. <laughs> so what about it? Care to learn the ways of the sword with me, Rikun? Nanami began to speak with a deep voice and attached a crumbled bit of tissue paper to her chin as if it were a sage bird. Master Kendo and you shall learn all the secrets of the universe, channel your inner chi and surpass all obstacles. Uh, maybe. What club does Haruka-san belong to? To be honest, I don't care. <laughs> We are going with you. Well, shoot down. I'm in the cooking club. Haruka did seem like the kind of person who would be interested in something like that. Unfortunately, I'm not sure how the rest of the club would feel about a guy joining. Well then, I guess I could check out the... Um. Of course, Kendo Club. I guess he could check out the Kendo Club for a bit. Hey, <laughs> really? Come to think of it, maybe the exercise would be good for me. Yeah, club activity are usually after school in the dojo. You can even come by today if you want. It wasn't long until I finished eating everything in my bento box. Thanks, Nami. It was really good. Ah, no problem, no problem. The bell ring, signaling the end of lunch period. I better get going. I'll see you at practice, Rikun. Nanami quickly grabbed her bento boxes and disappeared as quickly as she had appeared. It was nice having lunch with you, Sayonji san. <laughs> Haruka returned to her seat in front of me and put her bento box into her bag. Soon the rest of the afternoon classes began. Well, the first day of classes wasn't as painful as it could have been. Over half of the kanji in my history textbook was pretty much unreadable. I'll have to check out an English one from the library sometime. I wasn't that horrible for. I've already dealt with Korean, English and French, so learning my own language shouldn't be that difficult. And for the first time, I had an old friend here. As long as Nonami was around, things should be okay. Well then, it was time to check out the Kendo Club. I have no idea what Kendo about, to be honest, so it should be interesting. As soon as I approached the dojo, I could hear screams and the clashing of bamboo swords. Well, that's something I know about, but I have no idea how do you actually fight in this and so on. Ah. Well, it sounded really intense in there. I cautiously opened the door and stepped in. Oh, it's Rikun! All the members got into line, knelt down, and removed their bogu. Nanami came running to me, her helm now in her arms. <laughs> welcome, welcome! All of the members cursely came and circled around me. Nanami explained to them that I was looking for a club to join. Don't worry about the thing, Rikun. We'll train you up to become a Kendo Master in no time at all. Somehow, I got the feeling that Nanami was understating things. Uh, and, by the way, do you have anything to exercise in? I have my P uniform in my bag. Oh, that should do. Come on, come on, get changed. I quickly took the uniform out and went to the danger to the change room. Last Nanami Last Last than let okay, last Nanami ran out of patient and stripped me in the middle of the dojo. Least probably. Well, well. Never mind. I returned with my P uniform on. Oh, you've returned! Well, it's not like I was planning to run away. Alright, from today onwards, I'll be your personal candle trainer. Come on, Rikun, follow me! Nanami ran out of the dojo. Wait, where are we going? Come on, come on! Before I knew it, we were at the track field. Uh, I didn't know that we could also join the track team. No, 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 you see, we're gonna build your muscles by running around the track a couple of times. A couple of times. I wasn't liking the sound of this. Please, what's this? This this is a small track, man. 400 meters max. One lap. So we'll do 10, at least. 
Alright, let's begin with a few stretches. And I'm begun to stretch her legs. I will count to four. Then we count to eight together. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight. <laughs> One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight. Put more heart into it! Uh, I could almost see a volcanic eruption occurring inside her eyes. You ain't gonna unleash your inner summer with a voice like that! A one, a two, a one and a two! Five, six, seven, eight! That's better, Raccoon! Okay, I can't put more salt because it's middle of the night, okay? In here. One, two, three, four! Five, six, seven, eight! That's right! One, two, three, four! Five, six, seven, eight! And this went on until we were finished stretching. Okay, I think we are finally ready to run now. We lined up on the starting mark. Right, on your mark! Get set! Go! Nanami ran off as if she had a rocket strapped to her back. Whoosh! Come on, come on, Raccoon! Don't get left behind! No fair, you got a head start because you were the one who set the start off. Oh, 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 oh. No point complaining now. Nanami began to make rise scare noises. <sighs> they were just making fun of me. I ran as quick as I could, but I could barely even keep up. Come on, come on, Raccoon, you can do it! Uh, this was irritating. Getting outclassed by a girl. <laughs> Next time I'm gonna bring my Shina and start whacking you on the butt if you don't hurry up. As if something like that would happen. <laughs> I gave it all my all and accelerated. Oh, impressive Rikun. I'm gonna get you. Faster, faster, faster. <laughs> Just a little bit further. Nanami's back was getting larger with every moment. <laughs> Just when she was within reach, she suddenly burst ahead with renewed energy. Now it's time for World 1, Stage 2! What? That's not fair! <laughs> Try to catch me now, Rikun! She began to sing song the Super Mario Bros. team. Buddha, da, Buddha, da, what? Eh, okay, what the hell was this? Exactly. By the time we were finished running around the track, I was already doubled over gasping for air. I collapsed on the grass and started, stared up in the sky. It's not a good idea to collapse on the ground immediately after finishing running, man. You first need to catch the breath correctly. Water! Here! Anami handed me a bottle of tea. I pulled myself up, gulped it down and collapsed again. Thanks. Nanami plopped down beside me and laid down. Ooh, this weather is so nice. Yeah. Fluffy clouds floated high above the sky and the cool breeze felt nice after the long run. The setting sun cast long shadows on the gently swaying grass. I closed my eyes and basked in the cool spring air. Don't you wish that moments like this can just go on forever? Hmm. Lying in the grass, like this, makes you feel as if everything's going to be alright. That there will be no unhappiness, that tomorrow will bring a better day. That all of your happiness, all of our joys, will just go on and go on forever. Yeah. But everything had to come to an end. No matter how happy a moment, it was only for a fleeting moment. Everything had to change, friends had to be lost and special memories forgotten never again to be reclaimed, because that was the way things were. After all, we are here together, right? I'm glad. Mm -hmm. I'm glad I could see you again, Nanami. Yeah, Rurikun's being sentimental. Thanks. Maybe this really was a small shard of paradise that I had wandered into. I knew that the slightest of mishaps could easily shatter that shard to pieces. But while I was still within it, I was happy. All those years of silence were being filled with the sound of Nonami's cheerful voice. A huge, 
Empty void had formed inside of me from being a stranger for so long. Would that void get smaller? All of a sudden, Nami picked herself off the ground and stood before me. Alright, congratulations Rukun, you now earned your right to carry a sword. From today onwards, we'll be practicing at the dojo. I stood up and found that I now was feeling much better. It was already into the evening by now, we had better get going soon. Well, now that's over, let's go grab something to eat. We made our bag, uh, way back to the dojo. When do you start kendo, by the way? Hmm, well, I think it was about three years after you left. You should have seen me in my first blog back then. I even have a cute little shinai from elementary school in my room, just for memory's sake. Uh, I didn't know they made bogu for elementary schoolers. Yeah, it's quite the sight whenever I go to the tournament now and see the elementary schoolers fight. Ooh, I can't believe there's once a day when I used to be one of them. We arrived at the dojo after changing back into our na uh, regular clothes. We went to a McDonald's, okay, and continued our everyday conversations. After getting something to eat, we arrived at Nonami's house, since she lived closer to the school than me. Oh, we're here! See you tomorrow, Riku! Bye bye. I made my way back to my house. Well, to your parents' house, more likely. Well, today was pretty fun. I plopped into my bed and fell right to sleep. I think I keep telling homeward, while well, it's more likely it's homeward. But uh, the day Sora arrived was marked with the falling of up the showers. I had been on the telephone with her just the other day. She told me then that she was going to arrive in the afternoon, and so I probably had to skip club activities to help her move in. I talked to Nam and Haruka about this as we were walking to school. Ah, uh, so he could have a younger sister like that? Sounds pretty tough, huh? I can hardly even remember what she looked like. Will Sora san be going to school with us? Yeah, she'll be here below as well. Oh, I hope things go right. I suppose it's not that bad. After all, had it not been for her, I would never have come back here. Yeah, I suppose Angie san does have the pointer. By the way, do you two have any brother or sister? Brothers or sisters? Oh, I have two brothers. Big family, huh? Uh -huh. Well, we need all the help we can get at the Sapuraizu Donkey, anyways. Oh my god, it's Surprise Donkey. I'm telling you, Nanami, it's called Surprise Donkey. Uh -huh. Man, it's always a pretty big fun when we play on the Wii together at home for. Sometimes even our dad joins in and it's all four of us playing together. Total chaos. You can never imagine the amount of noise three men can make together. I don't want to know that. If Nanami called something noisy, then this was probably a new level cacophony altogether. I feel sorry for their neighbors. <laughs> yeah, maybe it will be like that for the Sanji San once Sorosan moves in too. <gasps> ah, then all four of us could play on the Wii together. As long as it didn't end with one of us getting arrested for breaking neighborhood noises. Who cares about this? <laughs> so, what about Haruka san? Okay. I should care actually because I care at the night about the noise and I try to not not go overboard while playing something and recording it. What about you? Haruka. Okay, I'm a single child. So that's like me. I'm also a single child. Single single child. Single child. Ah, I see. Well, it's not too bad, because then my parents can give me all the attention. <sighs> I don't like that at all, you know. I don't think that's something great, to be honest. Because they might pay too much, too much attention to you. Sometimes, though, I think it would be nice to have a younger sister to talk to. Uh, yeah, it is nice. My brother sometimes helps me out with my homework, since he's in college now. So, it's like me, I'm in college. <laughs> well, actually, I'm finished with college. Probably. I have the engineer title already. Don't know if I will go with a uh, master's degree. We'll see. 
Rather, it was each other. We almost didn't realize that we had already arrived at the school gate. Oh, we're here already. See you around. Bye bye, Nona Jan. No, let me run off to class. We had better get going too. I was too distracted by Sora's imminent arrival to really get into today's classes. As soon as the last class ended, I ran back to the house. Good. It looked like she hadn't arrived yet. Oh, I see. Wait. TV from Samsung, I think. And... Or, or Panasonic? I don't know. I, but I think that's Samsung. And Xbox 360 over there. Nice going. I entered the living room and sat down on the chair. It wouldn't be long though. My father was always busy with his work and usually didn't return until late at night. So I was the only person around to help Sarah move in. I sat in, in anticipation, with only the sound of the raindrops coldly lighting against the window to keep my company. Hopefully this weather won't delay her trip. All of a sudden, the doorbell rang. That must be her now. I leapt out of my chair and ran to the door. When I opened it, was uh, I was greeted with the top of a black umbrella. Mm. It was set aside and folded up by its user, revealing a frail looking girl underneath it. I had to bend down to talk to her face to face. Hello, you must be Sarah. I'm Rico, your older brother, kind of. Her greeting took the form of silence. Here, let me get your things. I ran to the taxi and grabbed a large luggage bag from the trunk. Was this all of it? Considering that she was going to live with us from now on, I would have expected her to have brought more belongings. After paying the driver, we went inside the house. A heavy silence fell upon the house as soon as I closed the door, as if I had just sealed shut the gate to an underground shelter. Well, you weren't really in contact, so that would be kind of awkward. I felt compel compelled to break the silence. Well, follow me, I'll take you to your room. There was only the sound of our footsteps against the wooden stairs as we made our way upstairs. Puppy love! I led her to the second bedroom and dropped her luggage back on the floor. She walked over and plopped down the bed, her stuffed tanuki in her arms. Do you need help unpacking? She shook her head from side to side a little. More silence. Are you hungry? Do you need anything to eat? Mm, well, we only have instant ramen right now. Would you like that, Sora? I wouldn't hate it. She responded so quietly that I could barely hear her. But at least I knew now that she could speak. Okay, I'll be right back. I went downstairs and boiled some water on the kettle. I poured it into two cups of instant ramen and brought them upstairs. Sora ate without a word. So, does Sora-chan have any hobbies? Not really. I see. Do you like that tanuki? Uh, important gift. A gift? From who? Don't know. Hmm? Do you think you will need anything? Uh, leave. Huh? My clothes are wet, I'm going to change. Oh, sorry. I quickly got out of the room. I leaned against the closed door and couldn't help but sigh deeply. Somehow, I got the feeling that leaving Sora was going to be difficult. <sighs> but I guess we, we can do this. We can make it work out somehow. We can do this. I know it's not a new situation, but we'll do this, okay? She's our sister, and we'll live with her like she's our sister, okay? Protect her from other guys, that's important. Kick asses, yes. And, well, other stuff. I don't know why I'm seeing with child, okay? I have no idea how I would... Uh, how I would adjust the situation when I had a sister, okay? I left Sora alone for the remainder of the day. Maybe it was the best to give her some time to adjust to her, her new house. 
I went to my room to study and then went to bed. It didn't look like Sora was awake the next morning. I tried knocking on her door. Sora, it's time for your first day of school. There was no response. I guess she was still tired from moving in. It wasn't a good idea to push her too much. After waiting without success for a response, I decided to let her rest and left for school. Maybe tomorrow she would feel better. As I was practicing kendo with Noami, I couldn't help but sigh. It's been weeks since Sora moved in now, but she was still skipping school and ignoring me. What if Sora never went to school? She could even become a neat. Who knew what kind of problems that would cause? All of a sudden, I heard a hole that sounded like a banshee, banshee and the sudden crack against my breastplate. Duo! The Nami literally flew past me like a warrior making a killing blow in a samurai movie and cut across my belly with her bamboo sword. Had it not been for the protective breastplate, I would have been rolling on the floor in pain. <laughs> Did you see that recon? Or just disembowled you? You are now screaming on the ground, your guts playing out all around you. <laughs> hey. Oof, 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 I say that the moment the warrior loses the focus is when he loses his sword. Phew. Anyways, what's the matter? Are you not feeling good today? No, uh, it's just Sora. She's been ignoring me and skipping school ever since she got here. Yeah, sora has been giving you trouble, huh? I don't know what to do anymore. I'm starting to think she just wants to be left alone. No, 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 no. You can do that, Dragon. Eh? Uh, well, I'm not really sure. Tell ya what. Me and her are gonna meet up at the surprise donkey. After this, why don't you come with friends? We can all have a nice chat about it. Are you sure? Wouldn't it be a bother for Nakamiya-san? Don't worry, she's actually really good at figuring stuff like this out. Just listen to her old friend and your wise intro and you will be... buddy buddy. With your sister in no time at all. Well, first of all, maybe talk with her. Try talking with her. <sighs> it definitely would be better. Well, easier. I know, it was... Wait, they were living separately with sister or no? Because if they were living separately before, then you know, if he knew, it's not like he didn't know about her existence, right? He could try to keep contact with her. Would be easier, but yeah, whatever. Once again, I got the feeling Tonami was understating things. But then I guess I had no reason to resist either. Right, right. If it's not a problem with you guys, I guess we could go talk about it. Yep, don't worry about a thing, Recon. And that's a nice place. After our club activities, I went to the surprise donkey with Nonami and Haruka. I poked at my ice cream sundae as the girl spoke. Spring's really here, isn't it? I get really disappointed to see the Sakura petals leave. That's true. It sounds how everyone obsesses about the Sakura, but in reality, they are only in bloom for about two weeks a whole year. <gasps> <clears throat> and I can't see that. <sighs> I would love to see that. Like, in reality, not on photos. Uh, by the way, did any of you guys have, have a Hanami party? Uh, I had one with my family. Uh, my grandmother actually let me wear one of her old kimonos. Oh, lucky! What did Nonachan do? I just went with my parents and my brothers to the river where those Sakura trees grow and grilled some fish. We pretty much our whole neighborhood were there with us. Hey, Rickon, did you do anything? Me? Nope. My dad's not really into that kind of stuff. Uh, I should know Rickon has had lost his roots. My roots? No Japanese person would ever miss a Hanami party. You're obviously an American. Gee, thanks. <laughs> Don't worry, Sayori san. There's still some time. Oh, I got an idea. What idea? Well, you said you were having trouble connecting with your sister, right? Why don't we all go on a Hanami trip together this weekend? That sounds like a great idea. A Hanami trip with two girls. Most guys would be jumping up and down at a chance like that. Unfortunately, I wasn't sure if Sora would be as interested. That sounds good. Don't worry, Samson. I'll come by in the morning and fight Sora on myself. Rare. That would be great. Uh, eh, after all, this is so that Sangri-san can get closer to his sister. 
and for Rickon to stop being so American. <laughs> I was the word. I suddenly had brown, brown hair and blue eyes. Uh, I think it would be good for Saint San as well to get reacquainted with Japan after such a long time out of the country. Because it's really beautiful this time of the year. We should all go together. Okay. Maybe how about this Saturday then? That sounds good. Alright, I think this calls for bringing out the Sapurai to Donkey. I didn't really follow what Tanami meant. She motioned to the waiters and asked her to bring us the donkey, whatever that mean, meant. All of a sudden, she returned with an enormous piñata and a wooden bat. Oh. So that's why this place was called the Surprise Donkey. I get it now. Come on, Rikun, you do the honors. Nanami handed me the bat and strung the piñata up onto a hook on the roof. Okay, I'll try my best. I approached the silly looking pa paper mache donkey and raised my bet. But, sorry Paul, no hard feelings. I swung as hard as I could down on the donkey's neck and successfully split it into two. A sea of candy and coupons spilled out and fell onto the floor. Oh, congratulations Rikun, I think you got the grand prize. I laughed and smiled sheepishly as I returned the bat to the waitress. Really? Uh, I could be in cover operation to the sister for sure. <laughs> that sounds so bad. Alright. Uh, let's end the episode here. <laughs> and we'll continue with Operation Little Sister in the next one. See you then. Bye.